What is going on everyone? Today we're going to talk about what to do if you're struggling with an autoimmune or inflammatory bowel disease flare-up. So after five years of being diagnosed with autoimmune disease and learning how to manage my ulcerative colitis, I've developed a protocol which can help calm your IBD, inflammatory bowel disease flare-up. Of course I can't proceed without saying that this is my own experience based off of my own trials and tribulations and it's what I have found has helped me the most. But what is an autoimmune flare? Autoimmune disease is a chronic dysfunction in our immune system. However, for most of us, it remains quiet. That is until the disease begins to make itself known through its symptoms during a flare-up. Flare-ups tend to be episodic, so you can be fine one day and then the next thing you know, you're in a full-blown flare. For inflammatory bowel disease, you're gonna have symptoms such as diarrhea, rectal bleeding, abdominal pain, fatigue, and weight loss. During my flare-ups, I have a hard time doing normal daily activities such as working, walking the dogs, communicating can be an issue. It seems all I have energy for is to rush to the bathroom and lay on the floor. During these episodes, our bodies become triggered to attack our own cells, whether that's through environmental reasons or genetic reasons. The cause of inflammatory bowel disease is in the name, inflammation. Don't get me wrong, I understand genetics play a huge role in a lot of autoimmune disease, especially inflammatory bowel disease. However, to give our body a fighting chance, we must first learn to understand the disease and then understand how we can reduce inflammation. Over my five years of learning how to manage my ulcerative colitis, I've developed a protocol to stop a flare in its track. There are three parts to my protocol to calming a flare. Number one, you're gonna wanna reduce inflammation. Number two, you're gonna wanna create a healthy microbiome. And number three, you're gonna wanna rebuild the gut line. So we're gonna start with number one. It's all about inflammation. In the case of inflammatory bowel disease, our immune system begins attacking the cells in our gastrointestinal GI system and poking holes in our intestinal lining leaving us unable to eat and digest food. Not all inflammation is bad. There are cases when we want inflammation to fight sickness or battle injury. We want our immune system to create inflammation during these times of sickness and injury in order to provide more white blood cells to the area so it can repair that system faster. Just to create a visual analogy, and because I'm from California, I like to picture that Controlled inflammation is like a controlled fire. Controlled fires are necessary to prevent bigger fires. However, in the case of inflammatory diseases, the inflammation is chronic and systemic. This means that there are constant fires everywhere in our body. How do we fight inflammation? While our immune system does it well, it struggles to fight fires over and over and over and over again. With a never ending amount of fires to fight, it's no wonder that our immune system becomes overactive. Learning to reduce and control inflammation is tricky and has become a billion dollar industry. With so many suggested flare protocols, it can become overwhelming and expensive to try them all. A major priority in calming a flare is to calm the current inflammation while avoiding creating more inflammation. We want to look for anti-inflammatory foods. This is going to include things such as turmeric or curcumin with black pepper and omega-3 fatty acids. One of my favorite recipes is salmon with some ginger, turmeric, black pepper, marinated, cooked on the grill. I want to avoid making this video too long, so I'll make a recipe video for that soon. And if you're not the best chef, or maybe you're just short on time, there are ways you can get these in supplements as well. So two of my favorite supplements are going to be Super EPA by Thorn, which is an omega-3 recipe that's great for inflammation, as well as their Morivia S500, which is a curcumin formulation. The second part of calming a flare is avoiding inflammatory foods. You are very sensitive to foods while you're in a flare. We know foods such as beer, bread, pasta, cookies, pretzels, and sugar create inflammation. So it's best to not have those whenever you're experiencing a flare or seeing symptoms leading up to a flare, even if you can digest them during normal times. In addition, you'll want to avoid high fiber foods, foods that contain sulfites and sulfates, and dairy. The list of foods that you should avoid is expansive, so I'll have a link to an article which lists the exact foods that you should not be eating. And I know it feels like you can't eat anything, but trust me, there are things that you can eat which will rebuild your microbiome and are easy to digest, which we'll be going over in a second. So the second part of the protocol is to create a healthy microbiome. When you're experiencing these symptoms of a flare-up, it's pretty certain that your microbiome is out of whack. The microbiome is the makeup of the cohabiting bacteria in our body found in our skin, in our mouth, and most importantly, in our gut. The gut houses 70% of our immune system, and the health of our immune system directly relates to what type of bacteria can be found in the gastrointestinal tract. A flare-up is the result of the imbalance in your GI system known as dysbiosis. Dysbiosis is when the harmful bacteria outnumber the good bacteria. Whatever your diet is currently consisting of is letting the bad bacteria grow and thrive while the good bacteria are dying off. This of course leads to inflammation and destruction of our gut lining. The inflammation is going to take a toll on your microvilli 
which are huge in helping you digest food. The good news is we already went over what not to eat in order to avoid this imbalance in your microbiome. Now we're gonna go over what you can eat to make it healthier. So luckily for us, I've already made a video about prebiotics, probiotics, and the microbiome, which I will link to in the description below as well as in the link here. Among this list of what you should be eating include fermented goodies such as kimchi, sauerkraut, pickle, kefir, and kombucha. One of my favorites during a flare when I have a hard time digesting anything and I just need something warm and good for my stomach, good for my soul, is gonna be miso soup. Yes, miso soup is fermented and it's good for you. One of the most important things for those experiencing an inflammatory bowel disease is going to be the type of probiotic that you take. Probiotics are not always necessary, but for those of us struggling with IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, I've noticed huge differences in my gut health when I am taking probiotics and not taking probiotics. This biome is my favorite probiotic out of the numerous amounts of probiotics that I've tried and spent money on. And it is the first brand I would recommend to those experiencing severe IBD or even IBS. And while it is quite pricey, there's extensive research behind this biome in the case of IBD and IBS. And of course, I made a video about that too, which I will link here. Third and final part of our protocol is rebuilding the gut lining. The microvilli are like your fingertips. They get eaten down due to inflammation. And now you're digesting food directly on the stomach lining. When you're digesting directly on your stomach lining, you're gonna have problems with your gut barrier. This barrier protects the inside of our GI system from the outside system, our blood. Holes in the system are gonna allow food to leak through our stomach into our bloodstream. A damage in the gut barrier is also going to lead to a damage in the gut-brain communication. Which is why when you're experiencing a flare, it can be very hard to communicate with friends and loved ones that you just don't feel that well and you can't really form thoughts or feelings. This disruption in our gut brain communication can lead to some confusion. I'm sure if you've experienced a pretty bad flare up, you've experienced a ton of brain fog and a ton of fatigue. Rebuilding the gut lining is possible, but takes patience. On top of a healthy microbiome, we must provide our body with what it needs in order to rebuild that microvilli. This includes collagen and glutamine, two major components in repairing the gut. And by far, my favorite way to consume collagen and glutamine is going to be in bone broth. Bone broth is my number one flare food. It's filling, warming, easily digestible and full of all the minerals and vitamins that you may need. Bone broth provides a real sense of comfort whenever you're not able to digest any other food. While collagen and glutamine are regularly available in bone broth, they're also regularly available in powder supplementation. Of course, I have to give you a bonus tip as well. We're now going to be moving on to something that's not as well researched, but definitely causes many problems in disease and health, and that's gonna be stress. So anecdotal and evidence, so just based on my own experience, whenever I'm on vacation, I can digest way more foods. My gut health is 10 times better than when I'm at home. And I'm beginning to learn that stress is a big reason why that may be. It is becoming increasingly clear that stress leads to disease and malfunction in our immune system. Learning to process or avoid stress can help lower inflammation, impact the microbiome, and strengthen your gut. Because because stress is a part of our society, it's important to learn how to manage stress. You can do things such as therapy, meditation, exercise, and deep breathing. If you are fortunate enough to be able to take time off from work, I think that's a very wise decision when experiencing a flare. Even if you love the work that you do, work can be a stressor. This is advice that I actually have a really hard time doing because I love what I do. Just understand that no amount of financial wealth is worth your wealth in health. That's a shameless plug for my personal brand, Wealthy Performance, where we believe that health is wealth. And don't go anywhere because if you enjoyed this video, I bet you'll enjoy this too. So I just want to thank you for making it to the end of the video. I'm going to ask you for a huge favor and that's to like and subscribe. It's going to really help the channel grow and help me reach my goal of a thousand subscribers. I created this channel to help people like me that are struggling with things and they can't seem to find help anywhere. I'm creating content of things that I wish I knew whenever I was struggling and very sick. So thank you.